A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation is st are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are interviewing the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Haim. News reports indicate that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to the release of over 70 Arab terrorists in exchange for the Palestinians agreeing to reopen the peace negotiations. Does Torah Judaism have anything to say about this policy? Torah Judaism most certainly has what to say on this topic. The Torah does not support, certainly does not encourage giving any kind of support, encouragement, etc. to terrorists or criminals. People who have committed crimes and who have been tried and found guilty are to be punished. And it is completely immoral and against Jewish law and I believe any normal and viable system of law in any civilized country to arbitrarily uh, release convicted criminals who have been sentenced to a given punishment by a court of law to arbitrarily release them for all manner of political motivations. In this particular case, this suggestion at this time is even more inane, more absurd, and more counterproductive and more immoral than the previous prisoner release which Israel committed uh, over one and a half years ago in order to uh, receive from the Hamas the captured Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit. At that time the argument went that we must do this you must release hundreds of terrorists, murderers, etc. included, in order to gain the release of an Israeli soldier who is still alive, who has been in captivity for a number of years. And this is what we must do. This is the price we must pay in order to get this soldier back. As you may know, at that time, I also expressed my view that even in order to facilitate the release of an Israeli soldier who is alive. Even for that purpose, releasing terrorists, I said at that time, is a terrible mistake and a very immoral action. In fact, in my view, a criminal action. In this particular case now, today, in July 2013, this suggestion is patently absurd. Here we are told Netanyahu and other members of his government are considering to release terrorists not in order to receive the uh, to achieve the release of an Israeli uh, prisoner of war or captive not in order to achieve anything concrete or real but simply in order to uh, begin once again for the umpteenth time the patently false and meaningless uh, diplomatic farce known as the peace process, which has been going on for as long as anyone living, more or less, can remember, which has achieved, achieved nothing at all, even remotely similar to peace. And here, simply in order to sit down and talk once again to our enemies, we are told that we must release terrorists. I would remind you that in the wake of the last prisoner release, as we just mentioned, in order to uh, get the uh, soldier, Gilad Shalit, back into uh, Israeli hands, at that time the level of terrorist activity, attacks on Jews in Israel, uh, attempted kidnappings of Jews, civilians and soldiers in the country was relatively low. Since that time, approximately 18, 19 months have passed and 
the fact is there has been an increase, a huge, massive increase in terrorist activity throughout the country. Terrorist activities including uh, throwing, the throwing of rocks, cement blocks and iron bars at cars, at traffic, which have in some cases resulted in severe injury for life. Uh, stabbings of Jews, which in some cases have resulted in the death of, of the victims. Uh, shootings at uh, Jewish vehicles and uh, travelers throughout the country. In fact, I heard just yesterday on the radio that of those terrorists released in order to achieve the uh, return of Gilad Shalit, to this day, 44 of those people have been caught and uh, reinterred because they returned to terrorist activity. In the book called Intifada, written by two uh, well-known and generally reliable uh, left-wing journalists here in Israel, Ze'ev Shif and Ehud Ya'ari, referring to the famous prisoner release in 1985 known as the Jibril deal at which time 1150 terrorists were released in order to uh, facilitate the release of three uh, living Israeli soldiers. They report in their book that we know today for a fact that over a third of those people, over a third of the 1150 terrorists who had been jailed for terrorist activities, many of them including murder, over a third returned to their terrorist ways. Moshe Arendt, who was at one time Israeli defense minister in the 1980s from the Likud party, was quoted in Ma'ariv newspaper in 2009 as having said, and he at that time supported the Jibril deal in 1985. He was at that time reported to have said that he regretted supporting that deal, that he considered it to be a mistake, and particularly he was convinced of this as soon as he discovered, I don't know why he was surprised to discover this, but he says that as soon as he discovered that uh, many of those released had returned to terrorist uh, activity, he realized it had been a great mistake. There can be no doubt that this terrorist release, as all terrorist releases in the past have shown, without exception, decisively, based on clear statistical documented proof, there can be no doubt that this will lead to an increase in terrorist activity and will lead to the death and maiming and injury of countless Jews. Just this past June, for example, in Haaretz newspaper, 2013, it was reported, and Haaretz newspaper, keep in mind, is a left-wing, very left-wing newspaper. It was reported that just the first half of 2013, there were 27 attempts to kidnap soldiers in Israel by Arab uh, terrorist uh, organizations and groups, which is a 100% increase over 2012, during which time, the whole year of 2012, there was exactly the same number of attempts. This is another simple, undeniable statistic quoted by uh, a source which is anything but right-wing or nationalistic in its views, which, which clearly demonstrate that such a policy is self-destructive, inane, immoral, and illegal, both in terms of common sense and general human decency, and certainly in ter terms of Torah Judaism. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. And a word to our viewers. If you would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with Rabbi Bar Chaim in honor or memory of a loved one, or if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael, please email us at office at machonshilo.org.